Hello everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. Last month I did an unboxing of the all new Kobo Sage and also gave you guys my first impressions. I promised I would do a review so finally, after a month, here is that review. The first thing I want to discuss is the hardware. The Sage is plastic but well constructed with a screen that's flush with its bezel and a textured pattern on the back to make it a bit more grippy and I absolutely love that grippy back. It's comfortable to hold and it doesn't make the device feel cheap like a lot of Kindles. Now, the Oasis has a nice aluminum metal back that is cold to the touch, but trust me, this feels much, much better to hold. Like the Oasis, its design is asymmetric with a larger bezel on one side, the one with the page turn buttons to aid in gripping the device. Underneath the hood is a massive 1.8 gigahertz quad core processor and it comes with 32.8 gigabytes of storage. You can also connect to the internet using the web browser. It has a USB-C port so you can charge it with your PC or Mac or wall charger. It is powered by a slightly underwhelming 1200 milliamp hours battery, which should provide around three weeks of ebook reading. It is also rated IPX8, so it can be totally submerged in fresh water for up to 60 minutes in a depth of two meters. Now there's no denying that the Sage comes in as a large package. It's 6.3 by 7.1 inches and 0.3 inches thick, making it shorter but wider than an iPad mini. And weighing in at 8.5 ounces, I did find the Sage a bit too large at times for one-handed reading. However, to be honest, I don't really mind the size and that's partly because of that 8-inch beautiful display, which I'm going to talk about right now. The Kobo Sage features an e-ink Carta 1200 display. Now this new screen tech delivers a 20% increase in response time over the previous generation and an improvement in the contrast ratio of 15%. In addition, faster response time enables smoother handwriting and animation displays. How does this affect the overall user experience? Well, the background will have more gradients of gray and the black fonts will really pop. For those who want to use a stylus for note taking, it also has less latency, shaving off precious milliseconds when drawing or writing on the screen. Now, I personally did not purchase a stylus for this Kobo Sage. I just personally don't take enough notes when reading to justify the need for the stylus. But for those who want one, I've heard great things about it. The screen is completely flush with the bezel and protected by a layer of glass. It has a series of white and amber LED lights, which provides a nice candlelight effect with the two blended together. Now, of course, the amber LED lights can totally be turned off and you can enjoy a vibrantly white screen. The responsiveness of the page buttons is lightning fast, quicker than tapping on the screen. So that's for the display. Now let's talk about audiobooks. Audiobooks are becoming more and more popular over the years, and nowadays many potential e-reader buyers are wanting to make sure that it supports audiobooks. Kobo launched an audiobook subscription service back in 2017 and a membership costs $9.99 in the US. Now you might be wondering, there's already Audible by Amazon, which has been on Kindle e-readers for about four years now. So although the Kindle was the first mover when it came to audiobooks and really, you know, made it mainstream, Audible is only available in a few select countries, whereas the Kobo operates pretty much worldwide. Also, just like Kindles, it is important to note that you cannot sideload in audiobooks. The audio player is only compatible with things you download directly from their audiobook store. So what's the selection like? Well, the audiobook selection is pretty similar to most other platforms. They have the same audiobooks available on Audible, Apple, or Google. You will pretty much find all of the latest big titles with really professional narrators. They basically have over 100,000 titles right now, and most of them are pretty recent. Now let's talk about software. Kobo has always used Linux as their operating system for all of their consumer e-readers, and the Sage is no different. It basically has all of the core Kobo features that most of their other e-readers have as well. The home screen shows you the books you are currently reading and also provides some recommended reads based on your purchase history. There is Wi-Fi, sync in the right hand corner along with Bluetooth and an illumination icon which gives you sliders to configure the lighting levels. You can choose from just white LED lights or mixing amber and white together or just pretty much shutting lights off completely. The Sage does not have a light sensor but it does use a time of day to determine light levels. The bottom of the user interface has links to the home screen, library, notebooks, store, and discover. Library is where all of your ebooks will be situated, either content you bought from Kobo or have sideloaded. 
Overdrive eBooks will also be stored here and ditto with audiobooks. Overall, the software is pretty similar to all other e-readers out there. There's only so much that they can really do with its user interface. Kobo has made it pretty simple. Of course, this one offers a stylus support so you can write and draw. And like I already said, I didn't opt for that stylus. Now let's talk about the most important thing and probably something you're all waiting to know. What is the reading experience like on the Kobo Sage? Well, I must say Kobo has done an amazing job in making their e-readers appealing to both casual and hardcore users. They have plenty of advanced options that the competition simply cannot match. For an example with Kindles, one of the most popular requests is having the ability to load in your own fonts. Now most e-readers and e-reading apps have a few different preset options to change the line spacing, margins, or font size. Kobo, however, does things a little differently. They have a bunch of sliders that allow unparalleled flexibility in determining how much weight you want your fonts to have and configure the margins and line spaces. You see, the Kobo Sage was designed to excel at reading the two most popular electronic book formats out there, PDF and EPUB. They also have support for manga, graphic novels, and comic books with CBR and CBZ formats, so users will be able to download them from the internet and easily load them on their reader, or simply just buy them from the Magna store. Now, what I really like about the Kobo Sage is the fact that it pretty much supports all file types. For example, when it comes to Kindles, they support AZW, PDF, and I believe Mobi files, whereas the Sage supports pretty much everything, like I said, EPUB, EPUB3, KEPUB, PDF, Mobi, HTML, CBR, you name it, and they've pretty much got the support for it. Now, what's the final verdict? Well, I must say the Kobo Sage is an absolute masterpiece and an elegantly designed brimming with features that new and advanced users can all enjoy. It is definitely the most premium e-reader the company has ever created. I will go as far as to say it's one of the most premium e-readers out there in the market, period. And if you just wanna you know, read books and comic books or whatever it may be, even documents, the large screen provides ample real estate and the e-ink technology that they've implemented in this is very easy on the eyes, day or night. You can also get the stylus that provides ample opportunity to freehand draw, take notes, edit ebooks, or do advanced tasks. Audiobooks on e-readers is a big new thing for Kobo. This is their second device after the Libra 2 to support it. You can easily subscribe to Kobo Plus and get credits or purchase them whenever you feel like. And personally, I would recommend the Sage to anyone who has a Kobo e-reader already that is more than four years old. So long story short, it's an amazing e-reader that I highly recommend to everyone. However, time for a disclaimer. Now, if you're someone who's already invested in Amazon Kindle books, or you're shopping for someone who is, you're probably better off sticking with a Kindle. You're not going to be able to read any of those Kindle eBooks on any Kobo e-reader like this Sage. So personally, I am someone who's very invested in Amazon's ecosystem, and I've purchased hundreds of Kindle books. Plus, I use Audible. So for me, as much as I like this Kobo Sage, it doesn't make sense for me to go from a Kindle to this. In fact, I'm more than satisfied with my Kindle Paperwhite and also the Kindle Oasis. But as always, I wanna know your thoughts. Do you have any questions for me? Whatever it is, comment below, let me know. Till then, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.